Greetings, Collective Coven. This is Trey, aka Taboo Tarot Reader, author of Astrology for Divination. And in honor of the new moon along the Virgo Libra cusp and the annual solar eclipse, October 2nd, 2024, I'm hopping on to offer a tarot scope for anyone tuning in to help any curious student of the tarot of the astrology to visualize and work with these transits using the tarot as a supporting tool and after we do the tarot scope i will do a little bit of intuitive tarot to clarify the hidden supporting energies and close out this collective tarot scope with a final oracle message so that sounds like something that intrigues you welcome i have not been offering any readings on youtube for a hot minute given all the current events happening and i feel it's really important before we dive deep into the tarot to say that in my humble opinion as an astrologer everything that has been happening since September 17th, 2024, the partial lunar eclipse in Aquarius conjunct Saturn retrograde in Aquarius, leading into this solar eclipse, October 2nd, 2024, has been perhaps judgment time for what we call Western civilization. Hurricane Helene, the P. Diddy scandal, the Israeli expansionist attacks on Lebanon and Iran, which are arguably the catalyst solidifying World War III following a year-long genocide of the indigenous Palestinian people. The Holocaust of our time. This is all deep, deep shadow work. So I preface this telescope with that. Eclipses have a tendency to trigger shadow work, and that is very clearly evident, repeat given current events right now. And I do not discuss the shadow lightly. So trigger warning, these are what we will be working through, these themes. And in my humble opinion, there is no light without the shadow. There is no yang without the yin. And shadow work, whilst I do not discuss it lightly, is very important to raise awareness about. So with all that being prefaced, let's dive deep. October 2nd, 2024, the Sun, Moon, and Mercury are in a triple conjunction in Virgo. Now, I work with the Vedic Sidral Zodiac because it is... 24 degrees more accurate than the tropical western zodiac and is in alignment with actual astronomical transits. So just another preface in this telescope, we are working with the Vedic sidereal zodiac. However, if you work with the western tropical zodiac, the eclipses have been manifesting along the Aries Libra axis and in the Vedic Sidral calendar they've been manifesting along the Pisces Virgo axis and uh, really like the Pisces Aquarius cusp um, it's not also black and white with the actual astronomical transits but I just wanted to say that the last time we had eclipses um, in these metaphysical spaces, regardless of which calendar system you use, was 1968 
during the Vietnam War. And there are so many parallels between the anti-war protests at that time and the college student encampment uh, collective liberation protests in 2024. And I just wanted to preface that as well uh, before we dive deep into the tarot to give you some context to understand, again, the first major arcana of the judgment. That this is not a necessarily a personal judgment, but this is a collective moral litmus test for our civilization, the global north. This is a karmic judgment. And individually, yeah, a lot of people are failing this moral litmus test and revealing or unveiling the mask are coming off and what is happening during eclipses you see people's true character or lack thereof. So the judgment, I think, in this context, representing this eclipse energy, again, just encapsulates perhaps a shadow work test collectively. And however that trickles down into the personal level remains to be seen for you and your story. Now ask yourself the question, who is embodying in your story the King of Pentacles? Minor Arcana, strong Virgo energy here. Okay, this is the Leo Virgo cusp. And Virgo is an earth sign. Pentacles represent the mundane aspects of money, material, accumulation, wealth, stability in this context of the King of Pentacles. And so this is invoking shadow work I'm sensing surrounding money. Because we have the Eight of Pentacles representing the sun in Virgo. Now, for many people, a very easy way to start doing shadow work is uh, journaling and asking yourself questions. How has my entire subconscious been programmed by capitalism? How has my entire sense of self been distorted by the pursuit of money? How is money controlling my life? How am I complicit in economic systems of oppression? Where are my tax dollars actually going? These are the questions being invoked, I'm sensing, by this combination of cards representing the sun in Virgo, which is a neutral space for the sun to be in in Vedic astrology. Now remember, there's a very special triple conjunction between the sun in Virgo and the new moon in Virgo and Mercury exalted in Virgo. So the mystery of the three Virgos perhaps is being invoked here. Maiden Mother Crone. But this energy can further be symbolized, obviously, by the Sun, Major Arcana, Abi, the Moon, Major Arcana, and the Queen of Swords, Minor Arcana, representing the Virgo Libra cusp intelligence, discernment, intellect, researching things, looking into things, having the intellectual curiosity to not accept things at face value, to critically think about all mainstream media narratives, and do your own research, is that Queen of Swords energy. Then we have also the Magician, Major Arcana representing Mercury, the shaman. <clears throat> and, and Mercury exalted in Virgo, also rules Virgo, is the Ten of Pentacles. More Pentacles energy here. So there is a cycle that may be completing for many people. I'm sensing here this energy may definitely be playing out in the workspace with the Eight and Ten of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles um, for, many, for many people. 
this is not a hard prediction. I do not necessarily make predictions. I read energy and archetypes. And these archetypes, again, for many people, <laughs> hope the wind just gave us confirmation there, <laughs> are most likely going to manifest in the workspace. Because again, Virgo is ruled by Mercury, and with Mercury exalted in Virgo, Ten of Pentacles, okay, this is triggering perhaps opportunities to adapt communication strategies, to express information in a different way because you know it's not landing or sticking. Or for many people, this could be about the way they integrate and download information. But I'm sensing for many people, given again this all this eclipse energy, this may manifest challenging uh, walking on eggshell type of energy, the eggshell paradox in a workspace, in a professional space, and perhaps a uh, organizational social justice space, a religious space, a any space in which there is a lot of human interaction and communication. Mercury. Okay, y'all? And what I'm sensing is, given current times, this is about the shadow work of recognizing, one, your co-workers are not your friends. One, they are not your friends. Two, ask yourself the question, again, who is embodying in my story, perhaps in the workspace, the king of pentacles? Is this a narcissistic, over-controlling, conservative, entitled boss? maybe a toxic masculine narcissist ask yourself who is embodying the queen of swords a shrewd business person who is again very intelligent very mental energy uh sees the longer game and is tight-lipped doesn't say a lot doesn't really reveal a lot of how they're truly feeling and is really good at communication who is embodying the magician perhaps a creative marketing type or advertising type an ideas person someone who's really attractive um, magnetic who draws people in okay ask yourself the question who is embodying these characters and potentially in the workspace because there may be some disagreement or even I'm sensing uh, political opposition. And one of these characters may be revealed to be a horrible moral monster, a genocidal sympathizer, a racist white supremacist, um, you know, a bigot. And therefore, the shadow work is do you remain civil and play respectability politics and walk on eggshells and uh, just continue to manifest the eggshell paradox or do you speak up and speak truth to power do you speak out against injustice in a workspace where there may be retribution judgment you know there may be retribution for showing up at work and maybe making some type of political statement of resistance maybe there may be the retribution of losing your job right now instability and really that's deep shadow work to ask yourself okay the prostitute archetype how far am i willing to sell my body time labor and energy in exchange for that money honey then pentacles this is triggering this shadow work for set for certain i'm sensing is triggering some core archetypes here of uh, the prostitute, um, the inner wounded child, um, and ask yourself the question, again, what am I spiritually okay with compromising? What am I okay with being complicit in order to make a paycheck? And what am I absolutely 
not okay with? And where do I draw a strong boundary? Because for many people, I'm sensing with the eight and ten of pentacles. Again, this is about um, the fact that financial codependencies are not just something that manifests in romantic relationships. Corporations normalize having a toxic financial codependency with them in order to maintain constant access to your labor and energy. And this is asking, this is, again, the shadow work that's being invoked here, again, is sensing is, if I know that I am working in a very toxic work environment that is run by sociopaths, narcissists, um, bigots, people who are perfectly okay with continuing the status quo of systemic oppression and fascism, am I okay continuing to receive that paycheck and all the baggage and funky juju that comes with that money? That's the question you need to ask yourself. I'm not saying quit your job during this eclipse in a new moon in Virgo. I'm just saying to really, again, ask yourself the question, who's embodying these characters, perhaps in the workspace, and do I really know who these people are when they go home and take off the mask that they present at work? Do I, do I really know who these people are? Now, there's another character perhaps entangled here, given the fact that we have Neptune retrograde in Pisces directly opposing this solar eclipse and new moon and Mercury in Virgo triple conjunction energy. And that Neptune retrograde energy can be symbolized by the King of Cups and the Hanged One, Major Arcana. We have again a couple more characters here just coming into play. Again, and now these characters again are perhaps opposing, directly opposing these ones. And they have very different views. They may have a different, totally different perception of what is reality. And there's a fundamental difference in perception here. And I'm sensing for many people. Again, this is about, do I remain civil with someone who I know is a bigot, a piece of shit human, someone who has no morals, no ethics, and just has that lust for that money, honey. Um, so this combination of the hanged one and the king cups is it for me like invoking a deep spiritual initiation again deep spiritual shadow work perhaps of renunciation that king of cups or purging purging some energy that maybe has been accumulated via entanglements with money money is the medium i'm sensing in this context of the entanglement again and really sitting with those implications What's the, where's the beginning of the supply chain to the end of the consumer? You know, where are my blind spots in that chain? Because the king of cups and the hanged one are invoking, uh, shifting the way you perceive a person, a situation, looking at the same situation in a different way. And for many people in the workspace, that may be a shift in, oh my God, I am in a, I am not a surrounded by family members. We're not one big happy family who just like to go to happy hour after work. No, I'm in a very toxic uh, work environment. These are narcissistic codependencies. I am only here because of survival and lack mindset and fear 
And I don't really want to be around these people every day and talking to these people every day. I don't really even want to um, be doing what I'm doing in this organization. Oh my God, who is my boss really when they go home and no one is watching? That may be the type of shadow work realization triggered by this eclipse given current times. I guarantee you, you're probably working with fascists and white supremacists if you live in America during 2024. And um, the ultimate moral litmus test is do you resist that or do you remain nice and civil? and polite just to have a respectable like we sh like these type of thought patterns too of like the king of pentacles like we should just all be able to have a respectable conversation even though we have differences of opinion and the king of cups is a type of person who's like no i don't i'm not interested in having disingenuous inauthentic conversations with you that are surface level if you fundamentally are bigoted and fundamentally do not view all humans as human beings worthy of respect and rights. Like in the words of James Baldwin, we can agree to disagree unless your opinion is rooted in the denial of my humanity. Paraphrasing here the brilliant James Baldwin. But that's what I'm sensing this core opposition is that will be manifesting I'm sensing for many people in challenging conversations uncomfortable conversations again um, breaking taboos of decorum and respectability politics breaking taboos of in the workspace of not going there when actually perhaps the most spiritual thing you could do again is speak up and speak out and do whatever and say what everyone is afraid to talk about because there's a lot of like fear energy again with the judgment here like heavy fear gunk and i sense this too for the deep divers because of rahu and ketu in vedic astrology the lunar nodes which are like Neptune retrograde also in Pisces and um, you know Rahu and Ketu are also are always at opposite uh, polarity points in the ecliptic so just like the eclipses the lunar nodes Rahu and Ketu are along the Virgo Pisces axis and now you may be wondering WTF is Rahu and Ketu, what are the lunar nodes? In Vedic astrology, these are the mysterious 8th and ninth planets, actually, that are shadow planets, said to exert perhaps more subtle influence than the sun and the moon. And therefore, they're very important, yet malefic forces. They're, they're malefic karmic forces. And all the corruption, all the deception in mainstream media, all the Darvo narcissism narratives, all of the sociopathy and Delulu cognitive dissonance and warmongering that is going on during this election cycle in 2024, I definitely feel is being tr uh, magnified by Rahu and Ketu's influence because it's never been clear that um, you know these politicians are just sociopathic clowns and it's never been clear or more obvious in my humble opinion and so um, Rahu and Ketu again in Vedic astrology they're said to be in strong spaces along the Pisces and Virgo axis so I just think keep in just keep that in mind that all of these horrible events, all of these seemingly really challenging current events, all of these 
heartbreaking, uh, I would even say, uh, inconvenient truths that we are having to confront about the reality of what it means to be a human being in 2024. This is deep karmic shadow work. Again, I sensing triggered by Rahu and Ketu, the lunar nodes, influences. And that's what I'm sensing, especially with the hanged one. This is a collective initiation. I keep coming back to that. Like this energy feels like a collective initiation, a collective moral litmus test. And again, most people are failing and showing that they have no morals and they are fine identifying with the oppressors who also have no morals and ethics. Like that, that's, that's the moral litmus test is realizing I maybe when I step into work, I'm surrounded by moral monsters and fascists. And that's terrifying. It's more terrifying to have those type of hanged one spiritual insights, again, upside down, flipping the script, than it is to remain silent. Because your silence will not protect you, in the words of Audre Lorde. And as much as you fear retribution, as much as you fear losing your job, as much as you fear losing financial stability and your uh, monthly uh, dopamine hit of that paycheck as much as you fear all losing all that nothing can compare to the terror spiritually of realizing that your silence will not protect you this is what I am seeing and sensing for all this you know, complex combination of archetypes during this annual solar eclipse and triple conjunction of the sun, moon, and Mercury exalted in Virgo. And again, that, that Mercury energy, the magician, the shaman, the shamaness, you know, this is understanding having energetic boundaries cleansing, purging your energy regularly, uh, things of that nature, and recognizing that at this time, the solar eclipse, it may be wise to lay low like the magician and move and, and and move in silence, perhaps, you know, do your work quietly, things of that nature, not, not draw attention to oneself, you could say, that's what I'm sensing, um, and learning how to communicate and speak in a way where you're not oversharing, that's what this energy is of Mercury exalted in Virgo, learning how to not overshare information at work that can be weaponized against you. Mm. Yes. Okay, feeling that for this shadow work during eclipse season. But let's now do some intuitive tarot and clarify what are the hidden supporting energies that the collective coven has a need to know using the occult tarot deck. Thank you to everyone who has tuned in. Please leave a comment of how these messages are resonating with you, including your sun, moon, and rising. If you're interested in personal reading, check out my website, check out my Instagram as well. Post a lot of content on Instagram about the astrology. 
and what is manifesting. Because this eclipse has been fucking wild. This eclipse season, to say the least, has been a revelation of that dirty, ugly truth serum. Mm -hmm. People romanticize the truth, but it is ugly when you live in a murk. That truth be nasty. That truth be horrifying. That truth bomb. People are people you know that quote, you can't handle the truth. Can never think of anything that's more appropriate than eclipse season 2024. But spirit, what are the hidden supporting energies? <clears throat> wow, we're 30 minutes deep. Where did the time go? when you're having fun. Forgive me if you think I'm being sarcastic and sardonic. I am heartbroken, yet I persist and resist despite the horrors and the moral rot. There she goes. Okay. We'll take the first card face up. The Queen of Cups. Strong Cancer energy. The message is thus. Teaches all sciences. Performs wonderful poetry. Follows all requests with excellence. And at the bottom of the deck. We have the chariot, more cancer energy. This is interesting. The message is thus, sower of discord, slayer of men. And you can see there's blood on this image. The hidden supporting energies here to me feel mm, like the queen of cups. Invoking the archetypal feminine and emotional intelligence. The Queen of Cups now is a very different queen than the Queen of Swords from earlier. Now, the Queen of Cups, rather than relying on intellect, relies on the emotions. And emotional downloads, the intuition. And the chariot here... Well, this to me just feels like all the war going on, you know, the death cult of the U.S. military industrial complex, and I'm sensing here um, there is a invocation to intuitively, again, feel into mainstream media narratives, framing certain military geopolitical complex and asking yourself the question how do I read between the lines here and pierce the deception with the power of the Queen of Cups intuition in order to gain clarity at that ugly truth what is the truth beneath these conflicts how do I repeat, read between the lines, knowing that most of this is gaslighting, most of this information is misinformation and deception, and coming from any and all mainstream media narratives? That is what I am sensing with this combination of cards, because cancer energy too, mm, this could be about as well, like, the shadow work of do you romanticize and have nostalgia about tradition and how is that weaponized to cause harm 
to other people, all in the name for your false sense of security. Um, the Queen of Cups definitely may like to, uh, I'm sensing here, um, not think about what's going on in the news. The Queen of Cups may spiritually bypass their shadow side. The Queen of Cups may be the type of person who's like, it's just low vibration to watch the news. And this shadow work is invoking spiritual decolonization and learning about what settler colonialism is. Because if you don't understand what settler colonialism is, what settler colonialism is, you have absolutely zero framework to understand the truth behind current events and military occupation. If you do not understand decolonization and white supremacy culture and critical race theory and queer theory as frameworks, you may not understand, again, the deeper power dynamics at play. And the Queen of Cups is inviting, it's invoking that shadow work of conquering the feminine fears of knowing that we're not all one. There are horrible, awful, evil people out there. You need to confront evil versus bypassing it and living in some type of delusional, spiritual snow globe. Like, that's the shadow work I'm sensing here. Because that's going to move you forward, actually, along your spiritual path, is to integrate this sh type of shadow work. This, again, decolonization shadow work. Especially if you're a member of dominant culture. Especially if you have never once in your life um, questioned privilege. But uh, depending on your proximity to privilege... Again, that's what I'm sensing is being invoked by this combination of cards in the context of Eclipse Shadow Work. Okay. Let's now pull our final oracle message for those of you still tuning in. Thank you so much. From the <coughs> Runes Oracle deck. Spirit, what is the final oracle message that the collective coven has a need to know in order to optimally integrate this energy into their personal story and manifest optimal outcomes heading into the remainder of 2024 following this eclipse season? getting a message here of again that Neptune retrograde energy directly opposing all this Virgo energy. Neptune is again invoking uh, piercing the veil of illusion and recognizing spirit on the spiritual path, the concept of Maya from yoga that we live in the physical world as a world of illusions and all is not what it seems in the context again of shadow work and really reckon, understanding the psychological phenomenons of cognitive dissonance, denial, and how people will cling to an illusion for a false sense of security versus embrace the cold, harsh, ugly truth. And that Neptune retrograde in Pisces may be triggering a lot of confusion in people, lack of clarity, maybe some, t you know, dream downloads as well. So I just feel this message of tune into your dreams for that information that you seek to get clarity. But Spirit, what is the final oracle message? 
Okay, hmm. we got Dagaz. Symbol of the day, the transformation. This is the rune of the dawn, of the light, which dominates the shade. It represents the transformation. This is all about that shadow work. There is no light without shade, shadow. There is no yang without yin. Light work is an illusion if it ignores and denies shadow work. Dagaz, to me, you know, represents, it's a beautiful rune. Turn it this way, it represents an hourglass. Time, cycles, observation of patterns. And it's also invoking, again, that innate balance of the yin-yang symbol here. It's a beautiful rune. I am so pleased <laughs> that this is the final oracle message for a solar eclipse tarot scope. Thank you, spirit. But I will let you interpret this final message as you do, collective coven. Thank you again to every single soul who is tuned in and as I said, take what resonates and leave the rest. Let me know in the comments what is manifesting for you during this solar eclipse and eclipse season 2024. It's been a wild eclipse season. Again, head over to my Instagram for all the latest news and all the tea. Because, you know, I'm here personally to spill all the, tr the tea. <laughs> And again, this eclipse season has been juicy with the P. Diddy scandal in particular. Can think of no better manifestation of eclipse energy. And if you are interested to learn more about how to integrate the astrology into your personal practice, check out my website for the online bookstore and the book Astrology for Divination a 444 page magical guidebook that helps you learn how to intuitively interpret your birth chart and placements. It covers all of the major placements and in my humble opinion is a wonderful resource for anyone who is seeking as well to learn how to integrate Vedic and Mayan astrology into Western Hellenistic astrology and with all that being offered to the collective coven i now just would like to take this time for a moment of silence loka Samasta Sukinova Bantu. May all beings be free. May all beings be peaceful. May all beings be happy. I also would like to take this opportunity to say, Fuck white supremacy culture, free Palestine, free the Congo, free the Sudan, 